How's it going, YouTube? It's your boy Ron, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pikmin 2. In our last episode, we had entered the Hold of Beast at, the, of course, Awakening Wood, and now we are going to get ahead and commence further exploration and hopefully finish it up here. We are introduced to our first. Oh shit! No 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 no! Okay, we almost saw a, quite a big blunder. Um, we are seeing one of our first hazards, and that is the fire geysers. We did see these in Pikmin One. Uh, not too much though, we really did only see them in the final trial, and also, I believe, what's the place called again? Oh, it's that place in, uh, I probably won't remember it. I do remember the name, but it's taking me quite a while to remember. Right, right. So really, the whole point of the fire geysers is really just to add just an extra layer of kind of danger, or just you know, another level of awareness, but since they can be taken out, it's not a big deal to get rid of them. Um, there really isn't any other treasure here. There is one in there. I'll go ahead and let the red Pikmin take care of that. Because other than that, there really shouldn't be anything else that's really preventing us from doing anything here. Everything should just be straightforward. I'll just go ahead and get rid of these fire geysers. Oh, and there is one more treasure up there. Okay. Although, for a name being called the Hole of Beast, we really haven't found any beasts. We only just witnessed some sheer growth. I mean... Yeah, sure, Grubs. I don't know why I would, I would keep... Sometimes I always confuse the name with Snitch Bug, but there is an enemy like that that we'll probably see just a little bit later. Um, not a difficult enemy, but just something that I keep getting confused with, even though they're not the same thing. But we did collect another new treasure worth 150 Pocos. It is the Strif, Strife Monolith. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's a, supposed to be a Mahjong piece, but I never really played Mahjong before, so I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but this one I am fam somewhat more familiar with. Um, this is pretty much a game disc. I can't remember. This is a Japanese game if I'm not mistaken. But I can't read those characters from this from this angle. And in fact, I, I did study some Japanese, but I don't I don't know that much kanji at all. Uh, at least the more complex ones, I really don't know those. <laughs> yeah, this is a Nintendo game from the, what is it? Family Compute. Yeah, I can't read that. <laughs> the Cosmic Archive, though, were 230 Pokos made in 1986, or at least that's that was made. And yeah, I can't read that. I'm sorry, guys, I can't read that. Maybe you guys can. You're better at it than I am. Uh, my Japanese is still very bad to this day. <laughs> uh, those Japanese classes in university were not always the greatest for me, but that's not what we're here for. We just collected our two treasures. No enemies. We go on to the fourth floor. Let's just going ahead maybe then we'll actually find some beasts because this has been a very anticlimactic cave to say the least first the saves same in a lot all right so a little bit of a smaller layout but this might actually be a bigger test for us all right it's still very dark there is some fire um i want to use my fire equipment i don't want to use my purples i already want to send that lesson the hard way Alright, uh, what is it down here? No, nothing down here. Oh, but I do hear some sleeping. Maybe you guys might hear that too. Well, well maybe if I get closer. Ram. I think it's down here, right? If I go further, yeah, it's probably down there. It's the only section we haven't really touched yet. Yep. Oh, there it is. The only enemy we've seen so far. The red bulbor, the only beast we've really seen. Some purples, it doesn't even wake up. Now it does, but it's dead. <laughs> yeah, purple pigment, like I said, makes this game very broken. Uh, I'll go ahead and use some more of my reds. And just collect me five more purple pigment. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the card and take the spoils. And there's even also a game and watch. Alright, let me go ahead and collect the purples. So now we should have 25 in total. That's pretty good. Um, I'm going to try to collect as much as I can. We do need a certain amount for one treasure, but since that's not for a while, I won't elaborate too much on that. But that is also why I did mention that you want to get as much purple pigment as you can. It will help in the long run. I promise you that. Something I didn't really pay too much attention to when I first played this the very first time around. But, uh... We'll explain a lot more of my tragic stories about this game later. There's, there's a lot of significant sections throughout the story that I have been very epitomal for. But we do get the Lucky Wafer, which is basically just an ace card. Nintendo branded. 140 Pokos. 
And our next and penultimate final treasure of the cave. The Game & Watch. I think it's the ball version. You can't really play it, though. It's a Dream Architect. And I think it's one of Nintendo's significant handheld games. I think it's one of the first, if I'm not mistaken. I really don't remember too much about Nintendo's early history. But um, this was, of course, a relic of the time. Or 280 Pokemon. And that sound means that there's nothing left. Alright. We are actually going to be wrapping up a bit more quickly than I thought. There, I think we did explore everything. Yeah, we explored everything. Need to do that, but uh, there it was an egg, and I believe it was right here. Yeah, let me go ahead and just butt up the rest of these purple Pikmin. Oh no, these are what are these called again? Sheer lights. Oh, yo, okay, okay. So <laughs> I know I made it sound like a, a lot worse than it should have, it really isn't that bad. These are, I, th I think, these are called sheer mites, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't remember what they are supposed to be, a young form of, of anything, if I remember correctly. But sheer mites are mainly just to scare your Pikmin to make them uncontrollable and pretty much run lucid. So they don't directly harm Pikmin, but if they are in a situation, or if you are put in a spot where it can harm them, that's the only way they can directly hurt them. But you don't have to worry about them eating or killing them or squashing them, anything like that. They are just meant to scare the Pikmin. But we have all 70 still, everyone's a flower. We have 20 purples now, 25 excuse me, after that, five. We are looking very good for the final subfloor. Let us go ahead and dig deeper into the last floor, sublevel. All right, so underwhelmingly speaking, a very poor um, hole of beast. I mean, by poor, I mean, we really didn't see anything. We just collected everything. It's pretty underwhelming, but this is where we actually see a big jump. We actually are on top of a landmark that looks somewhat familiar, somewhat. Ooh, that sounded ominous. The final floor. And you hear something sleeping too. But is it a bull board? Oh, yo, that's looking mighty thick for a bull board if you ask me. Wait, whoa, but the face is like a bull board. This thing is huge. Alright guys, <laughs> enough of that. You already see what it is. It's massive. It is Empress. Well, it is Empress Bull Blacks. But let me go ahead and make my Oh wait, hold on. I forgot it wakes up over here. Um This is what I get for being stupid. Uh I'll just leave Homer over there. Alright, Louis, your time to fight, cause it is after we wake it up. Do like barely any damage. We wake it up. It is Empress Bull Blacks, ladies and gentlemen. The first boss we are encountering in Pikmin 2. It doesn't move and it doesn't eat your Pikmin. It just stands there. This is Empress Bull Blacks at its finest. Since it is a huge lady, we will go ahead and attack it straight on. It'll just stay put, struggle. It'll wiggle away any kind of damage it takes, but it will roll around. That is its method of attack. Just be careful. Don't get caught in that fire, because if you do, uh, you will get squished, like all will show us. Oh, okay, never mind. Alright, so just be careful. The best way to fight um, Empress Bulbox is just to be on the sides. Time your throws perfect enough so that way if she in case she does try to wiggle her Oh, like that, like that. Be careful if that happens. Alright. She will just move from left to right, so just be careful. Ooh. So yeah, it'll hurt. Just be careful. But honestly, Empress Bulbox is not a big deal to handle. Alright, we should be able to do one more hit after this. Honestly, she isn't really that bad of a um, boss. It is difficult if you don't know the right method of attacking her, just be careful. Um, that is why there was that little deep cutout for you, um, in case you want to attack her from the side. But the best and optimal way to do is from the front. Once she's defeated, she will pretty much destroy much of her abdomen and be left with resembling the head. That's about it. Oh, but we get a tester. Love tester. <laughs> okay, no, that was bad. How bizarre. This device is emitting black light. It must have been invest ingested by that creature. Mm, what an absolutely repulsive life form. <laughs> Our return to Hogote cannot come soon enough. But it won't come soon enough, man. It All right, so Empress Bulbax drops the first significant boss item. If we go ahead to collect the love tester. And also, bosses you can go ahead and take back to your pot as well. They will be worth a little bit more than most of your average enemies. Still not worth a lot, but still something you want to take any remains of. 15 Pokos is still a decent amount. Nowhere near treasure, but at least better than your average dwarf bull orbs, that's for sure. Little footsteps left as we creep onto the big sig- first, our- well, second. Our second significant item, and that is... 
Oh, the prototype detector of two, worth 200 pokos. Let's see what the pot has to say about it. This, contra this contraption seems to react when it approaches treasure. I will connect it to my radar. Processing complete. The treasure gauge is now fully operational. It will now appear on your monitor. The, the needle will move right as you approach treasure. All right, so the prototype detector is going to be our first significant item that will appear in our HUD at the bottom right. That'll actually give us a better indication of treasures that we see in the overworld as well as dungeons. Once it is grayed out like that, it'll signal that there is nothing left for us to observe, um, nothing left for us to capture. It is pretty much just an empty floor. Um, once we head back to the surface, we'll see it actually become more shifting and then we can actually detect better treasure from it. Um, other than that, we done everything at the Hole of Beasts. We collected all the Pikmin that we need and every treasure. There's nothing left. We will now commence heading back up to the surface. And with all the treasures we salvaged, all six have been collected. No Pikmin debts. It is a perfect cave complete. That's what we love to see. We collected everything and collected all the enemies that were pretty much there too. So nearly we are at 20% of our debt pay off. That is actually looking pretty sweet right about now. Still have about uh, seven, a little over, just a little under 8,000 more Pokos to collect, but we are getting there slowly but surely. Back to the Awakening would we go. When still half the day left, so there's still a decent amount we can do. All right, and of course the game will like to signal us at any time we go through a 10% increment, it'll go ahead and notify us that we have done that much. Um, I only have 45 reds, but that should be enough. I'll just grab five more, not a big deal. I'll grab five more, so we'll have 80. Um, other than that, okay, so the same enemies will appear. At, a lot of times after you go into a dungeon, a lot of the things will typically tend to reset in the overworld. <laughs> um, I don't want to waste too much more time here and also anything you defeated in the overworld will go ahead and reset back but to go ahead and elaborate on what I was talking about that is the gauge that we collected as you can see it does um, wiggle around and sensor in case of any treasure that you're approaching um, of course the more to the right and the louder it gets the, the more close you'll be to treasure and the further you're away the less it'll actually pick up on anything um, there is a um, burrowing snagger. It should be burrowing snagger. I'm actually being stupid. Okay. Let's just kill this one since it is in the way. Purple pick. I'm telling you, they make a difference. Alright, um, there is another cave actually. So let's go ahead and approach that and see what information the pod will tell us about this one. Astounding. My metal detectors are reacting violently. What could be down below? If you find trouble below, press start pause to contact me and press R on the radar screen. The exploration pod will drop it it will drop its loot to make room to carry you, Louie, and the Pikmin to safety. Alright, um, that's just another way of saying how, um, to play it safe. I'll explain that a little bit in a second. But, of course, the name of this cave is going to be the White Flower Garden. There is a fire element here like we saw back at the Holy Beast. And there's also what appears to be a poison element. That might be hinting something, shouldn't it? Alright, um, it is. But um, since there isn't much we can do here in this part of the overworld, um, majority of the middle section, the main plaza of the Awakening Wood, is pretty much fully explored as of right now. And even if we head towards where the area of the Holy Beast is and where the White Flower Garden is, we are pretty much limited on how we can explore in that regards. The cave is going to be the next stop. Uh, the next stop. So what I am going to go ahead and do is with the remainder of time left, uh, we will go ahead and start a mini exploration of the White Flower Garden. So let's go ahead and enter with all 80 Pikmin. Um, yeah, that's about it. There is also another cave there, but we can't touch that right now, so we're not going to do it. So the White Flower Garden is our next stop. So let's go ahead and begin exploration. Oh, and also to elaborate a little bit on what the pod was saying, in case if you're ever in a predicament where a cave might be too difficult or you're running low on Pikmin, more specifically a specific type than really just the number sometimes you can always bail out on the start menu just so you can play it safe and just head back with anything that you've had you will of course drop all your treasure keep that in mind you will have to reset you will have to recapture everything you've dropped um and you can of course do that 
when you give up an escape. You can, of course, escape with all your Pikmin, but like I said, you will risk losing all your treasures that you've collected thus far. Just keep, no, actually, no, you do keep them. Keep that in mind. See, even I forget sometimes. All right. Okay, so now we can go ahead and commence. There are more sheer grubs, female and male. Let's just go ahead and get rid of them. And I believe over here there might be a bit more. Yeah, there's more. Luckily, we can actually charge onto them because unlike in Pikmin 1, if they are not broken. You can actually just run up in them, and if, even if they consume, they will not eat them once a death. Because man, in Pikmin 1, that was stupidly broken. Okay. Um, I don't think we'll see. Okay, there's a treasure over there. But let me just collect the remaining spoils of the enemy battles. Um, and also throughout Pikmin 2 dungeons, we will see a lot of layout changes. Um, so of course we were more familiar with like the cake layout. This is more of an, I guess, an, a rustic mechanical layout, if, the, if I'm using the right word. I can't really think of like the correct words for these layouts. Um, but of course not every cake will be the same generic cake layout. That's just to add some kind of design and spice to the game. You will see some unique layouts that will either hinder or help out your Pikmin, whether that's directly battling enemies or for specific item layouts. You will see those in very, very few specific sub-levels throughout the Pikmin dungeons. There are very few we can take advantage of, and the rest you're just going to have to be as creative as you can. But the few that will come up, I will bring those on when we... But of course, Kiwi Shoe Polish, the first item we collect at the White Flower Garden, the Alien Billboard. 80 Pocos, I'm not really sure what that name was all about, <laughs> I'll be honest. But with the one treasure, there's not much else we can do here. We will go ahead and start commencing over to the next sub level. And with that, we might be hitting the time limit. I'll just have to see. And, and also be careful. Um, I probably should have made this a little bit more elaborate, but it's also pretty much self-spoken. Do not throw your pigment out here. Um, this is not a safety net. There isn't an invisible barrier that will prevent them from falling off. If you throw them or they get launched over there, they will instantaneously die. So just keep that in mind. Don't be stupid and throw your pigment out there. That's no good. So let's just... Oh. Almost really made a big fool of myself right there. <laughs> that would I actually did get a little bit scared. I thought I threw it enough to where it would just bounced off. That would have been super sad. The point is not to lose Pikmin here. Oh man, you guys saw like a little bit glimpse of a small all right. Sub level two. Um I think we're gonna be introducing ourselves to a new enemy. Alright, it is a new enemy, but it is a familiar face. These are the fiery blowhogs. We did see these in of course the original Pikmin and similar concept. They will, of course, shoot out fire. Purple Pikmin make this obviously easier because it does stun them, preventing them from really blushing them out and throwing your Pikmin off. Of course, like the Fiery Bullhog, they don't consume Pikmin, but like their method of attack is they will brush Pikmin in a blushing fashion. And if they have to be facing towards the ledge, you can almost be certain that your Pikmin will fall death to that. So just be careful. Really be careful about that. Always try to fight these enemies in a way where if they throw them back or shove them off, it's going to be in a way where they can't possibly live, um, throw them off a cliff or the edge. Let them face you in this direction. And pretty much just stun them to all hell. Yeah, Purple Pikmin make this immensely easy. You'll hear this a lot throughout the series. Everyone will tell you that Purple Pikmin just make this game a lot more bearable. Without them, it wouldn't be bad, but it would make a lot of um, enemy battles a little bit more frustrating than some should have been or would have been. Alright, so let's just go ahead and collect more treasures. There are two on this floor, more conveniently in the middle. And we, we can of course just run up to this one. And then we'll of course collect our spoils, why would we not? And I'm gonna go ahead and, since we can't go over this, we have to actually throw our Pikmin over, but don't be shy, just go ahead and just throw it over. And the Pikmin will do the rest. Alright, and it's a Dr. Pepper bottle cap. I like that. That's one of my favorites. A drought ender, and it sure is. Those who love it, you already know. For those who don't, get out of my channel. <laughs> Alright, not just like Uh this value is of 100 Pocos. Alright, we got another one of our bottle caps, and then one of our last treasures in this floor. I like how the pigment that will capture will always just be brushed off to the side and then the rest is open. But we do get a nice oh, gem wow. heart, the petrified heart. Quite lovely, worth 100 pokos. Nice sight to see. 
All right, that is all two treasures. And of course the gauge on the bottom right, or yeah, the bottom right will indicate that there's nothing left. It'll shut off to make that noise. And pretty much everything's cleared. No need to come back. Um, I think that's about it, honestly. Okay, so similar to the Hole of Beast, I will be just doing these first two floors. The last previous three will be left for another episode, guys. There is not much we did here in the White Flower Garden, but I will assure you the next episode will be a lot more impactful on this ground. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Do hope you enjoyed. So just a minor recap, we did finish up the Hole of Beast and let me move my cursor away. That's scaring me a little. I'm getting very anxious. All right, we did clear the Hole of Beast and we also found our first boss enemy, the Empress Bulblax, a very, very humongous bulborb. She is the Empress of all things, so of course she would be like that. But very easy to overcome, so no problems there. We did get the prototype detector that'll help us out in our journey immensely. And of course, we enter the White Flower Garden. We're going to be finishing up exploration next time. Guys, this has been your boy Ron. And until next time, I'll see you guys back here at the White Flower Garden at sub-level 3. So we can go ahead and commence finishing up exploration here. I will see you guys then. Take care.